What's up guys, I'm BTC. BlizzCon is over, but we did get quite a bit of useful information. So I'm gonna do a quick recap of all the important stuff at BlizzCon. First up, there'll be no Respawn series video this week. If you're new to the channel, you don't know what that is. The Respawn series are videos I put out every Sunday where I take a whole bunch of questions from you guys about the characters, the meta, everything, and I try to answer them as best as I can. That will be returning next week, but today we gotta talk about BlizzCon. We'll get to Overwatch in just a second, briefly running through the other games. Warcraft 3 Reforged looks cool. I don't know how much interest there's gonna be. Hearthstone, there's a new expansion, new cards, new heroes. Pretty much par for the course what you would expect from the Hearthstone announcement. Heroes of the Storm has a new hero, kind of a lukewarm reception to it. And then you have World of Warcraft. People were excited that the vanilla base game was going to be coming back with those kinds of servers. However, disappointed that it's going to take almost another year before they come back. And then of course you have Diablo, which was just a disaster. I don't know what Blizzard was thinking. You have a fan base that is largely PC gamers and you introduce a mobile game. It's just not gonna work. I mean, with Hearthstone, it's okay because of the way the game is and because you can play the cross-platform and all that sort of stuff, but Diablo, I don't know, man. I just don't know what they were thinking. And finally, how good was BlizzCon for Overwatch? The McCree animation was a lot more upbeat and playful than the previous ones. It seems like Blizzard kept trying to make this is the saddest animation ever with the Bastion and May and Reinhardt and D.Va. Like they just kept doing the same thing over and over, trying to make it as sad as possible. So I'm glad that the McCree animation kind of diverted from that. It did definitely seem to be a fairly solid animation. Introduced a whole bunch of characters. And then of course you have the brand new character itself, the Hero 29, which is Ash who is a high skill floor, high skill ceiling character, and I think this is definitely going to be a very good addition to the game. There does seem to be some anti-tank qualities to the character. I'm not sure how much of an impact she'll have on the meta, but it's definitely going to be a very good addition to the game. Now, on top of that, Jeff Kaplan also said that Hero Number 30 is fully playable on their internal testing. I mentioned this in a previous video. That is just kind of crazy because that means they've already developed the character. They know who it is. They know the story behind it. They know what the abilities are. All that stuff is fully functioning. So maybe they have to work on the animations or maybe the artwork or whatever it has to be. But for that character to already be at that late of a stage in development when they just released Ash is kind of crazy, and I really do hope that they speed up the release schedule of these new heroes. Jeff Kaplan also confirmed a couple of things. Echo will not be hero number 30. They're currently working on six new heroes, and he is well aware that there is a problem with not enough tanks and not enough healers in the game. So we're probably going to get Echo as one of the later heroes, but we can expect the next several are most likely going to be tanks and healers. Overwatch guilds were also briefly mentioned, but that it wouldn't be just an Overwatch thing. Instead, they're looking at making a guild system for all of Battle.net. So whether you play World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Starcraft, Overwatch, whatever, you can get other people on Battle.net into your guild. However, that sort of thing would require a massive amount of effort and technical changes, so it wouldn't happen anytime soon. But even in that case, I don't know how much of a demand there would be for a guild system that goes all across Battle.net. I could see people wanting to have other people in a guild in Overwatch, but why would I care if someone who plays Hearthstone is in my Overwatch guild? We already have that functionality with the friends list on Battle.net, so I don't think adding guilds to Battle.net is really all that necessary. Jeff Kaplan also talked about roll queue, and it does seem like this is something that could very well get added to the game. Originally, they kept telling us, no, 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 they're never going to add it, but now the way Jeff Kaplan was talking, it seems like a large amount of the developers for Overwatch do want roll queue. He said that they already know exactly how they would implement it if they do put it in the game, they know what it would require, and all the timetables and that sort of stuff. It's just basically a matter of enough of the dev team thinking that it's a good idea for them to finally put it in the game. Now, in my last video, I mentioned roll queue and people asked, you know, what exactly is roll queue? 
queue. So brief explanation is when you queue into the competitive ladder, you get to choose what kind of a character you're going to play, either damage, tank, or healing. So that way, when the matchmaker is putting together teams, it's trying to put together a balanced team. So rather than having four mercy mains or five DPS on your team, you would get something a little more even, like two tanks, two healers, and two damage. Now, I don't know exactly how they would do it. Does it mean that you're going to get locked out of the other roles? Like, if you pick DPS, you can't play tank, you can't play healer. I don't think that would be a good idea at all, because sometimes you need to switch in the middle of a match, or maybe something's going wrong, or you need to stall, or whatever. So, locking out other characters, I don't think that's a good idea at all. But you also have to consider people taking advantage of certain aspects of it. So, if healers have a really low queue time and DPS players have a high queue time, then what's to stop a DPS player from simply queuing as a healer and then just playing as DPS anyways? It's going to throw everything out of whack. So there's lots of different possibilities and ways that they could implement this. I've already come up with a solution that basically corrects all of those issues in my role prefer system. I don't know how Blizzard's going to handle it. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The other major thing that kind of got lost a little bit was the replay system. This was available to PC players because it was in a beta phase. You could watch the World Cup games and you could speed it up, slow it down, change the camera, move it anywhere you want. You could follow your favorite players, all that sort of stuff. The replay system is absolutely amazing and obviously they're going to use this for the Overwatch League next year, but they also said that they're going to make it available to all players so you can record your own games, send it to friends and all that sort of stuff. So that is really awesome, but like I said, it kind of got lost because they announced this before BlizzCon actually started and during BlizzCon itself, they didn't really talk about it that much. So it just, it feels like it was like this amazing thing that they added and they almost never even talked about it. In addition to the opening ceremony that had the McCree animation and the new hero announcement, you also had five Overwatch specific panels. And to be honest, they were pretty disappointing. So you had two artists at work where they basically showed how they create character skins and different things in game. Most of this focused around Ash and how they created that character. You had another one called Voices of Overwatch, which was the voice actors, basically talking about voice actor stuff, exactly what you would expect. And then you had Overwatch Building a Hero, where they show how they add new abilities and all that sort of stuff. That one was actually really cool, but I don't see why they needed to have two completely separate artists at work panels. They probably could have fit some of that into one, maybe extended one of the panels a little bit longer to include some of it, but I don't think having two of those was entirely necessary. But the thing that kind of disappointed me the most about those Overwatch panels was the Overwatch What's Next, which was on Friday. When I see a panel called What's Next, my assumption is that they're going to tell me about what we can expect to see in the following year. New character types, new damages, new maps, new ideas, whatever it happens to be, the new stuff that they're going to be adding. But during the What's Next panel, they didn't talk about any of that at all. All they talked about was how they added Ash into the game, some of her storyline and that sort of stuff. But we got that in the other panels as well. So it just felt like the what's next should have been about what's next. And instead we got about what we just created. I mean, I guess it's still better than the Diablo panel, right? So there's the recap for what we got at BlizzCon. Oddly enough, a lot of the information that we ended up getting about new heroes and the game changes that are gonna happen didn't occur during panels. They occurred during interviews and Jeff Kaplan just kind of like talking off the cuff about this or that or whatever. So that's the BlizzCon recap. Hopefully Ash will be available on the PTR in the next couple days. What was your favorite part of BlizzCon and did you think it lived up to the hype or were you disappointed? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.